Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Pillars of Eternity, The White March. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as I get into Edred's house, or whoever's house this is, but apparently whoever lives in here asked us to join them. Well, I've been here before because I explored all of this, and there was a locked door back here or something? There was a locked door back here, was it? Uh, well, I saw the map. That's a map, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, don't rem. Let's see. Let's see the journal. So, quests. Ah, uh, which one is it? <laughs> yeah, it's this one. I've been summoned by Dunry Dro by uh, to Dunry Dro by Lady Wab, a reclusive woman who seems to know more about me than I know about her. And apparently it is... she's somewhere in here. Where exactly? Mm, they don't say anything, figures. Lady Webb is in charge of Hadrid House, but she rarely deals with anyone personally. Well, apparently... am I gonna be the first one to deal with her personally in ages? Is she gonna be a soul, probably? Probably? Anyway, let's... I don't see how... Uh, oh, whoops, I forgot the... I forgot the ladders! How the hell? The ladders, the, the stairs, sorry. I get those mixed up a lot a lot of times, but you will, you'll forgive me, I know you'll forgive me. Anyway, let's go upstairs. I've been here as well, I remember. There was, um... Somebody told me... Oh, no, I don't... Oh, yeah, that was this locked door. See? Yeah, Lady Web will see you now. Will she? Hi! Oh, she is... A godlike? Really, I can't close the door, by the way. Well, I'm in her bedroom. Excuse me, miss. Or lady. In this case, quite literally a lady. Let me save the game and let's see. This woman clutches a thick stack of parchment with spindly, wrinkled fingers. Their flesh stretched thin to near translucence with extreme age. A gossamer veil over pale blue vi veins. That, that word, I don't know. Ink splotches and candles burns dot and stripe. Her hand, like a quilt path patterned after some great and describable truth. She does not look up from her reading. So, the messenger conveyed my summons. A miracle that would make the reincarnation of Aethys look like a child's cantrip, surely. It doesn't draw the most inspired minds, messaging. They failed me so many times of late, I nearly sent a cipher after you instead. So this is the Watcher who took over Cad Noir. Oh, don't look so surprised. It isn't an attractive expression. I wouldn't be where I am for long if I let details like that escape me. Hmm. Huh. So... Yeah, let's just keep going. This is exactly what I would picture Aloth's mother to be like. Is she Aloth's mother? No. Really? No. And this fiasco in the sanitarium that you seem to have gotten yourself into the middle of. What in blazes possessed you to stir that nest of trouble? Well, it wasn't... it wasn't me who... who, possess, who got possessed, really, in truth. But, uh, anyway... Well, I'm investigating a strange group. Strange does not begin to describe them. The practices of the Leaden Key defy all reason. You're not the only one with an interest in their recent activities. I've lost four ciphers this year alone trying to get someone inside their ranks. As it is, we only have our suspicions about who is in the group and what they intend. Which I suppose means we have much in common with them. I asked you here because I wanted to know what your interest was in all of this. I thought perhaps we might help each other. Why are you looking for the Leaden Key? That last question didn't sound very reassuring, if I'm honest. But it's understandable. If she's leading the investigation against... Or uh, the investigation on, on the Leaden Key, then it makes sense that she would want to know why I'm investigating, uh, investigating them, especially considering that the Leaden Key is supposed to be a secret group or something. Well, I will be honest with her because... She probably won't kill me. She probably... She's probably friendly. I mean, really? Yeah, well... One of their members caused my soul to awaken. I need him to reverse it, apparently. I do. She's 
She closes her eyes and the lids flicker. Then her face goes still and her mouth parts, little more than a sliver, and her hand briefly drops open, spilling some of her parchment to the ground, the pages wafting around her legs like the leaves of a dying tree. Her fleshy eyelids peel back and her gaze is immediately upon you. The gods are cruel, I'm afraid. The man you seek is Theos Ix Arcanon, Grand Master of the Leaden Key. One of the most elusive and dangerous men Aora has ever known. Is he that guy that I saw outside? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm I get the faces mixed up. Uh, so, how do you know I seek Thaos? Because you have seen his face, and that oh. makes it a simple matter for me to see it. You even happened to catch him in a ceremonial garb, it seems. It must have been a special occasion. So it was him! What, what can you tell me about him? More than most, though very few would know so much as his name. And there is no way of knowing how much of what I've read is true. The Leaden Key dates back more than 2,000 years. If rumors are to be believed, Theos was the one who created it. What scraps of evidence exist suggests that he has died many times, only to be reborn each time exactly the same man. Awakened during adolescence with all the knowledge and experience of all his lifetimes, the plots he orchestrates sometimes take hundreds of years to bear fruit. Needless to say, this is not the natural order of things. But he is said to be one of Woodica's favored, and that old bat was never one to let rules get in the way of favoritism. Hmm, so Woodica... I... Uh, yeah, when when uh, when she was saying, by the way, her sound, her uh, voice sounds so much like what was her name, Akara from Diablo 2, <laughs> so much like that. I'm not sure if it's the same voice actress, probably not. Uh, but when she was saying this, I was thinking, how exactly does this connect with gods? Because awakening during adolescence, with all the knowledge and experience of his lifetimes, this sounds vaguely like Jesus, <laughs> um, except Jesus uh, got awoken. To didn't get awakened, but whatever. At least according to the Bible. Um, but uh, this connects to the gods. Apparently it's Vodica who is, I don't know. Ugh. Is she orchestrating all of this? Probably. That may also explain another supposed gift of his. His body is no boundary to his soul. And he is known to take possession of others. If their souls are weak enough. Often it is for elaborate deceptions, but sometimes he simply forces them to kill themselves. He is not known for his generous supply of pity. So he's basically a cipher. Because the cipher also deals with much of this, like forcing people to do things they don't want to. The cipher, the cipher being a class in the game. But, uh, so it was him, it was he that we found down in the sanitarium or sanitorium. Hmm. He is also not one to show himself in any but their most critical matters. If he has directly involved himself in whatever the group plots now, it may be your only chance to find him. And once you do find him, if you can find him, I would not hold my hopes too high if I were you. He is a driven, single-minded man. He will not have the slightest concern for your problems. Oh, how do you know so much about Theus? The same way I come by all my knowledge. Exhaustive research, spying, bribery, perhaps some less savory measures. Whatever the knowledge demands, I pay in full. There is nothing of greater value. Unfortunately with Theos, there is also nothing more scarce. He has covered his tracks far too well. His manipulations of the course of history are lost to time now, though I believe they were many. Hmm. Yeah, only he knows that now. But yeah, yeah it doesn't really matter. We're de we're we've been dealt the cards we've been we've been dealt, and uh, 
So, what what else is there to know about the Latin key? Precious little, I'm afraid. You may know much of it already. No one member knows the identity of more than a handful of other members. They are kept in the dark of missions they are not involved in, or sometimes of those they are involved in. They exist to hide secrets they themselves don't know. If you can imagine how gullible someone must be for that to appeal. Despite that, they are very good at what they do, owing much to their founder, who will take matters into his own hands when necessary. And he does not fail. Hmm, especially if he reincarnates himself and just basically is immortal. So, what do you want from me? Keep me informed. The Leaden Key has been busy lately, and that is distressing news. I can only guess as to what they intend. You seem to have a knack for turning the stones they've crawled beneath. Keep turning them. Dunreed Row will not stop you. Good. Whatever it is they're up to, figuring it out will be of great use to both of us. In your case, it will surely point you to Theos. In return, I will share our knowledge with you as we learn it. And provide you with what assistance I can. I wonder what she stands to gain from all of this. Hmm. Huh. Very well, though. Very well. If you find your trail has run cold, come to me with whatever you have. There is much I may be able to do for you. Okay, there is something I can tell you about the Leaden Key's operations. Well, let's hear it. Yeah, I found Theos in Brackenbury Sanitarium impersonating a patient who was trying to damage the public's opinion of animacy, and he actually succeeded in that. Forgive me, it is unlike Theos to leave witnesses. He must be furious. Well, I'm sure he didn't want to leave witnesses, and he wasn't there to see me ex escape his minions, but still. He did not aid you as you'd hoped, I take it? Well, take heart. With any luck, when he has finished his business, he will surely come and find you again, if only to kill you while you sleep. Ah, uh, <laughs> how comforting. This news of yours makes sense, of course. To dabble in animancy is to puzzle over the secrets of the gods. This would not be the Leaden Key's first action against it. Oh, I get it. But if this is connected to their other activities, we may be in for something on a much larger scale. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, but I yeah, know I understand. Now I understand. So I wondered how exactly the Latin key stood to gain from all of this. From, uh, you know, for, for, it's just from, from, uh, what, what did I say? What did I call it? Damage the public's opinions of animacy. That's right. Um... But apparently it's because they keep secrets. Huh. If we can learn more about their goals and methods, perhaps we can get the palace behind us. With Avar's support, we may be able to put a stop to this. Okay, so I have other questions. Yes? Tell me more about Dunreed Row. All the things there are to know in this world, and you ask me about work. <laughs> Deerwood is a rebel country. Conflict is in its blood. If you think a few guards posted in our cities keep chaos at bay, you are very new to town indeed. We are Deerwood cipher investigators, of course. But what we really are is its last barrier against anarchy. People are more at ease when they believe they are watched over by someone more enlightened than they are. It pacifies them, so that is the image we foster. And we do try to be enlightened for their sake. The knowledge we gather here is Deerwood's standing army in many ways. We learn what's vital and we act on it while Deerwood sleeps, blissfully unaware of the terrifying truths all around them. Huh. I wish I could tell people the things I know sometimes. But the truth is, I don't think many of them could bear it. Oh, so you are like the librarians or something. Uh, of course, being ciphers. 
Yeah, ciphers in cipher investigators. You are more in tune with the soul. Hmm. So how did you come to be here? Me? I started this place in a different time under a different duke. I impressed the duke with my research and my work ethic, and he became possessed of the notion that I would be ideal to lead a secret network of gifted investigators. I don't know how such an idea got into his head. Oh, who would know? So, oh, this is... No, no, I'm not going to ask how old she is. Uh, are you a psychic? Nah, she's a cipher. Come on, Kitty. No, you know better than this. If you are hoping I can look at your hand and tell you whom you should marry, you can just wipe that notion from your mind. I do not know what will happen tomorrow. That is what I pay spies for. Being a cipher is not unlike being a watcher. Yeah. You notice more about what is already there. Many can hold an object and know where it's been or peer into the thoughts of people around them. They can also sometimes affect those thoughts, but that would be unethical, of course. Of course, of course. A tiny, talented few pick up so much about the world around them, they can get images of things to come, but these are fleeting and unreliable. Really? You said you don't, don't know what will happen tomorrow. Who said I was talented? Oh, sorry. I don't. Least not that I can trust. And with me, it's only ever about one thing anyway. What? A quiet day at home. <laughs> okay, so is there a Lord Webb? There was. Oh, I... Mm, I don't want to press on. Kitty, no, shut up. What happened to him? He believed in dying with dignity. He was old-fashioned that way, my husband. We saw the world very differently, he and I. But he was good to me while he lasted. <laughs> Sorry for your loss. Let's talk about something else. Uh, so farewell. Try your best not to die out there. Yeah, do my best every day. I do my best every day. So I need to inform Lady Webb about the Latin Keys activities. Hmm. That is interesting. So this gives me purpose with the main quest, it seems. That is... That is quite interesting, but there's still the issue of the... What's it called? Uh, I don't remember the, the caves under Cadnua. Yeah, we need to get there. I'm going there right now. By the way, in between episodes, as I told you I would, I, I took the liberty to explore the crafting and... Not the crafting, but the uh, uh, enchanting system in the game. And now I understand how it works. It's actually fairly simple. I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you, but first, let's go to Cadnua. Let's explore Cadnua, and I'll end the episode with a little explanation as to how that works. If you know that already, well, then you don't have really much to look forward to, but, well, maybe you can correct me on some assumptions that I've made. Uh, anyway, let's uh, go back to Cadnua. Now we're gonna have... I don't remember exactly what I built, where all things are going right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh... Okay, this in Barbican appears to be fixed. Well, it wasn't it fixed already when we... Yeah, it was fixed already. And this one... Everything is fine. Everything is cool. Uh, yeah, but let me look. Let me look at my... No, that's not this one. This one. Yeah. So, basically, one new... Nothing new to report. Okay, so turn. Nothing new to report. These are the days, right? Turn 13, turn 12. Yeah. Oh, that music! Okay, so Kana is still escorting this guy, which apparently removes the debuffs, which is pretty good. Pretty good. The upgrades are still being built, I would think. Yeah, one day left for that. So, I got the Eastern Barbican completed. I the one Western Barbican will bar passage for invaders. Not completed. We got uh, Bright... Yeah, let's, let's visit Bright Hollow. So where is that right now? That is over there. Ooh! Looks a little bit better. It does, doesn't it? I think it does. I think it does. With the with the lights and all. I do love I do love the how all the lights turn on from outside. Yeah. Let's go in and see how this looks. Because last time I was here it was it was all full of cobwebs and, and broken things. And it still it still is. Is it a little bit cleaner? Mm, no, it's still all broken. So, what's going on right now? What? 
That, that was my tooltip. So what? How exactly is this better? Because I remember I did, I restored that. When I first played the game, I restored this. And I didn't understand why or how. Because I'm supposed to rest here? Do I have a bed? I have a bed. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna rest. No bonus? Yeah, of course, no bonus, because... Oh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's rest. Yeah, yeah. You awake to see Durance's staff held in both of his hands before him. A flame flickers at its top end, casting long shadows across his face as he stares in contemplation. Still, for all the light of the fire, your eyes can focus on him. Perhaps it is awakening from sleep or a trick of the light, but he seems indistinct, blurred around the edges, everything except for the staff. The staff? He seems to be studying it. its engravings. As you watch, the engravings glow thinly red, like through the cracks of heat so suffused wood. The lines stream like molten metal, burning along the edges of his staff, then bench out in the intricate series of fiery veins, bunching bunching thickly where its ends clutch the wood, pulsing as it as if a heartbeat. This sounds very suggestive. All of this stuff about his staff, hmm, and, and veins, pulsing as if heartbeat, and hands clutching. Yeah, I'm not sure what Duras is doing to Kirino. Hmm. As you watch, the veins spiral into a dozen separate circles. Circles that spiral again until they are arranged in a circle of their own. They pulse weight and all in a strangely silent... And, and all is strangely silent. And then suddenly there is a great light from the fire, a rushing of air, a great flash. And you awaken again to see Durance in the same place, still holding his staff. But he, he is solid, real. He doesn't seem to have noticed you or reacted to what occurred. Was that his soul? Yeah, I had a dream? Hey, Durance. Let me, show, let me see your staff. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I had a question. If doubts and curiosity plague you, you're skidding your knuckles on the wrong door. Well, I saw something strange. You were sitting by the fire and I saw a great light from your staff. Tell me what you saw. Huh, it was a flash like an explosion, a rushing of air, incredibly bright. It is the light of the god hammer you saw. Huh, what about it? It was a weapon of Deerwood's people. Oh, right. A symbol of their independence. How? It saved the Deerwood. I know, it was a bomb or something, wasn't it? Wasn't the kill the thing that killed whatever... Yeah, so what do you know about it? It brought the Saints' War to an end. Exactly. Knocked a god from his perch. There are few that would deny Aeothis overstepped. The God Hammer reminded Aeothis of it. Yeah, the God Hammer basically killed Aeothis. Okay, so yeah, I, I knew that already. You saw its light because I helped shape it, give it life, and release it into the world. Once seen, its glory is almost too bright to be believed, and too bright to be forgotten. Wait, wasn't the God Hammer deployed like 150 years ago? You helped build the God Hammer? There were 12 of us. Oh. We fashioned the weapon, drafted plans for it, prayed for guidance at Ashfall, and it came to me there. Each of us were given a staff made from the forest of black trees around us, glowing with embers and fire far greater than this branch you see now. Wait, you were one of the twelve? The original dozen? What? Remember this, guys? Yeah, we, we read about the, the origins of the dozens. Oh, really? So you died, or... No, yeah, you had, it's, had to, it had to be your soul. It felt as if the staff was Margren's own finger, guiding my hand, guiding the other eleven, the shadows of the twelve who had come to stand on the bridge to stop Aethys. Yeah, so, well, I also saw a dozen bright circles emerging from your staff as well. Even in that stand, there was a ritual to it. For the twelve that stood on the bridge, there were a dozen shadows cast, a dozen faithful of Margrin, her fiercest supporters and shapers of the God Hammer. Durance rests the staff in front of him and the flames atop it. Curls for a moment, the light flaring slightly. It spills into a ring of flames, one after the other, until a dozen is met. Oh, you can do it? As twelve held Aethys fast, 
we twelve unleashed our prayers and let the god hammer fall. And then it blossoms brightly once and resumes its scandal intensity. In the aftermath, the shadows seem sharper in the vicinity as if they have edges and you blink to clear your vision. Durance is still staring at the tiny candle-like flame intently. Shadows cast by the fire of the god hammer, perhaps. And we share their fate as well in time. Now the spine of the Deerwood is marked by the Godhammer. Marked by Magrin. By you guys? You were the ones. So, what do you mean, Share They Fade? You died, right? Not all deaths come with stilled breath and stilled heart. Or other stilled passions beneath the waist. Some deaths come from silence. Oh, I don't get it. The connection we once shared with Magran. After the light of the Godhammer, it was not the same. It was as if we'd lost our senses, and sense of purpose as well. Instead of victory being welcomed, there was silence within and without. Not many can claim to have killed a god. It is less a heroic tale than you would think. And such a death, it changed our faith. All faiths, I expect. Doubtful. And the world changed. I do not believe Margaret was pleased by what we had done. Why is that? The world is broken. The wheel stilled. There is sickness in the world's heart. Perhaps the price of crossing a god. Yeah, that would make sense. Much more than uh, than uh, worshipping Eothus, uh, being the cause of the Hollowborn. But uh, the wheel. So is that the wheel of life or something? Crossing two gods. Even as Margaret shaped our hands, perhaps we carried her will farther than was allowed. Just as Widewing did. Saint Widewing. Mortal arrogance to match mortal arrogance. Hmm. Yet if the world had changed, then I sought to change with it. If I had forgotten some of Margaret's teachings, I would find them again. I would make her see me again. What did you do? I remembered Margaret's teachings. How reminders on the flesh were more important than the death of a vessel. And I wondered if killing Aethys, if that had simply set him free, had it allowed him to escape his punishment and be taken on the wheel like a mortal? His punishment? You mean immortality? As I stepped from the now blessed Godhammer Bridge, I thought of Ashfall. I thought of the War of Black Trees, wondered if I needed to be burned to find myself again. That is Margaret at her heart. At least that is my hope. These are the doubts that befall me. So what happened when he returned to Ashfall? The road to Ashfall is long. Gives one time to think. And if you think long enough, you do not go home. I left without telling anyone, with only the robes I wore at Halgot, my staff, and my name. Which is long buried. Your name? Yeah. But, so you're old? No, let me see. Let me guess. So, you might have been young back then. I think... So the independence of Deerwood were, was basically 150 years ago. And the fall of Elthas, I think, might have been like 20 or 60 years ago. So that makes sense. He's, he hasn't died. He's one of the four that survived, I think. There were four that survived, and but he left. Yeah, I think that's it. They all left, didn't they? So maybe this guy knows what happens to the others? Of my fellow eleven craftsmen, disciples, I know not what happened to them, if they suffered the same doubt as I did. But it was underserved. It was wrong. We had done all that. Or had asked. Grab victory from defeat and... and... You feel as if you, your god has betrayed you. There is something about being used and cast aside. Perhaps Widewen himself felt it. 
there at the end when the hammer struck, to be the proof that your god is hollow as the vessel it inhabits. I tried to find purpose and avoided all contact with other Magranic priests, did not seek the walls of Ashfall, and sought to make amends to my god through actions. I joined with the purges for a time, and not long after came the first signs of the Hollowborn. So many crimes, trespasses, violations. The salvation. Animancers were another sickness born of the Saints' War. A relapse of innovation, of desperation to heal what we had caused. All seemed worse than before the bridge, not better. And as years passed, the world became even worse still for the victory. Yeah, you committed atrocities and your goddess has shut you out for it. Exactly what you deserve. Sweat collects in the sooty creases of his forehead and runs down his ruddy cheeks. It drips from the tip of his nose. His mouth moves, but his utterances make no sound. He is for once at a loss. Feeling your gaze, he quickly composes himself, wiping his forehead with the back of, his, of a dirty hand. Hmm? Huh? Worship the whims of some fickle bitch and you'll never be more than dirt beneath her feet. Worship what she worships, on the other hand. Take her fire for your own, and her esteem comes on its own. Of course, by that time you no longer need it. Trial and transformation, sure as Durance taught. Durance taught? So you took his Who is Durance? Durance glares at you and staring into his eyes gives you the feeling of peering over the edge of a great cliff. You think to put the coals to my feet, but what's burned once will never burn again. These talks are your trial, Watcher. You cannot deflect the truth to one who has already been purified by it. <laughs> well, I don't follow. I don't exactly follow this guy. He's pretty crazy. But anyway, I think I'm gonna break the episode right here. For now, I'm Colonel RPG and this has been Pillars of Eternity, The White March. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.